Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Sorry we're running just a tad a couple minutes late. Well, actually, almost 10 minutes late. But anyway, uh, God is still good. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Those that are here in person, those that may be watching or will watch this by way of Facebook, thank you so much for tuning in and watching today. Trust everybody's had a good week, safe week. Well, we've all been safe because we're all here, those that are, of us that are here. So we know that we've had a safe week, and uh, thank you so much for being here. Before we get started, we'll uh, take some prayer requests. I have um, saw on prayer request, uh, some prayer requests this morning online. Uh, pastor's wife, Sister Ash, uh, is dealing with the UTI up in, they, live, they pastor the Bryson City, not Bryson City, Bessemer City uh, Church of God. Uh, then we got a message uh, to remember um, a man by the name of David. Woford, uh, this morning they put him on a ventilator early this morning. So remember him in prayer. Um, uh, you got anything else, Brother Coble? Um, no, not really. Okay. Um, just remember, um, Doctor Bell's wife, um, Sister Trish. She's she's battling COVID right Is now. Is she really? Yeah, oh, Brother she? Bell was staying in Whittier, and she was staying in Charlotte. So, oh my goodness, yeah. you did, hadn't told me that. Well, yeah. yeah, we'll definitely remember Sister Bell. That's our state bishop's wife, so let's remember her. Anybody else got any requests? Chase. Um, so, mom, mom's ex boyfriend committed suicide Thursday. Oh no, oh, no. Chase. Oh, thanks. And so, I just need prayers for the family that took that because his mother, he hanged himself in the backyard, and oh. I think his mom saw him and found him. Oh. And it happened where I was born at, so you just need prayers for the family. Absolutely. I hate to hear that, buddy. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Sister Norma. Uh, continue to remember my du uh, brother, Dwayne Cotman. He had cancer surgery on Tuesday, not Tuesday, Thursday the night. And uh, when they get the results back from that, they're going to know what steps they're going to do next right mm. now. They don't know how bad the cancer is, how far it's spread, etc. So wow. The Lord will be in it, especially for his salvation. Yes, yeah. definitely, definitely. Anybody else? Remember Noah, he's having some seizures this morning. I think it's due to the weather because, you know, this little, what, 27 degree dip temperature change today from yesterday. He had a <laughs> two minute one. This yeah, Bill called me when I was going to get chased. He's like, Noah's having like a two minute seizure. So I told him a trigger point to rub on his knee, and he got to it, and it stopped. So, but uh, anyway, do remember him today. Remember Austin and some of his little friends went on a trip, and they'll be flying back uh, sometime today. Okay, so we'll pray for safety on the flight. Yes. Anything else? Of course, let's remember each other. Let's remember. Uh, of course, continue to remember the Duncans. Did anybody mention them? No. Mention Danny and Donnie and Sherry. Let's remember them yeah. in prayer. Brother Jimmy, of course, got him home Friday. Praise the Lord. Walked into the hospital room and saw him. He's sitting over there on the chair, uh, on the couch, all nice and ready to go home, except he had a hospital gown on. He had to get dressed, but uh, he was ready to go home, so he seemed to be excited to get home. Yes. You're doing, you're recovering well, ain't you, brother? I sure am. Uh, I ain't had a bit of problem. Amen. Amen. That's good. Praise, praise the Lord. God. That's awesome. Let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Amen. That's awesome. Yes. We've just been praising the Lord. We've just been doing obeying God and just thanking Him for His miracle. Amen. And, uh, and I did want to pray for the members of the children's home down in Concord and the yes. children's home down in Lake Walkamore, North Carolina. Okay. We sure will. Yeah, we know our Church of God children's home, they're in need of... I think some house parents and a part-time or full-time secretary. They got some needs going on there. So definitely remember our children's home. That's good. Jenna, did you have something? Yeah, just pray that the Lord protects our property. Yes, amen. Protects us in the property of the church grounds. Yes. Okay, anything else? Just the world crisis that's going on. Over yes, there. yes. We don't know what's going to happen next, do we? Yeah, we but, do. Well, we well we know the rapture is going to happen. <laughs> Woo, yes. But uh, besides that, you know, I mean, on the physical realm, 
of things. But yes, we do need to. Jenna has been watching that very heavily this week. Uh, well, it's wondering. just hard to think that they're going to go in there and all the people that's going to be hurt and killed and all the lack of everything that they're going to yeah. have because of it. Yeah. If they do go in. Right, exactly. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Anything else? All right. If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Now, you may not remember all these requests, and that's okay. But God, God had heard them all, right? All right. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we do thank you, Lord, for another opportunity, God, that you've given us. Lord, to come to your house, God, today, and Lord, gather in your name and worship you. And Lord, we thank you for that, God. And I pray, Lord, that you would just touch and move, God, in our service today. God, we do welcome you, Lord, here in our midst today, God, that you would touch, and God, that you would move in our midst today, God. We welcome you, God, Lord, and Father, we pray, God, that you would touch, God, and anoint, Lord, in the Sunday school hour, Father, God. Give us the words to say, Father, God, and may we just share and learn about your word, Father, uh, Lord, today. And God, we do lift up, God, these requests to you, God. We lift up Sister Ash, God. Uh, there at the Bessemer City uh, Church of God, Lord, that's dealing with the UTI. God, we pray that you would touch her, Father. We pray, uh, God, for Mr. Wolford, God, that went on a ventilator this morning, God, that you would just touch him, God. Lord, we know that you can bring people off the ventilator, God, and you can touch and you can heal. And, Lord, we pray that for him today, God, that your will would be done, God. Lord, we pray, God, for Chase's... Uh, uh, God, for his birth mom, and Father God, for that family, Lord, that lost a loved one, God, this week, God. We pray, Lord, that you would comfort their hearts, God, bring peace to that situation, uh, Lord, and we pray, God, that you would just uh, watch over them, Father God, in Jesus' name, and Lord, we pray, God, that you would be with the Duncans today, God, that you would touch Danny and Donnie and uh, Sister Sherry, God, just touch them, Father God, and Lord, continue, God, to touch them, Lord. We thank you, God, for them, and we pray that you would touch them today. God, we pray for Austin and his friends, God, as they uh, travel home, God, on by way of plane today, God. We pray, God, that you would keep them safe, God, and watch over them. Lord, we pray, God, we, uh, Lord, lift up, God, Sister Norma's uh, uh, brother, God, to you as well, Lord, that you would touch, God, Lord, him, God, most importantly, God, touch him, God, spiritually, Lord. Let him see, Father God, his need of a Savior, uh, God, in his life, God, before it's eternally too late, God. And, Lord, we pray, God, that you would just touch and anoint, God. And, Lord, if I for, uh, forgot any of these requests, God, I pray that you would just, Lord, you heard them all, God. We pray, Lord, for these children's homes, God, that Brother Jimmy has mentioned, God, our Church of God children's home there in Concord. And then the other one, Lord, that he mentioned, God, we pray that you would supply their needs, God. Uh, Lord, God, for for house parents, God, and for a secretary, and Lord, for whatever else, God, they may need, Lord. We pray, God, that you would touch, Lord, and supply their needs, God. And Lord, we thank you for that, God. We pray, God, for your hand of protection, God, to be upon the grounds, God, here at North Greensburg Church of God. Lord, we thank you, God. Lord, you've been faithful, God, and Lord, we know you'll continue to be faithful. And Lord, we pray, Father God, for these uh, people, God, around this church, God, in our community, Lord, that doesn't know you, God, as their personal Savior. Lord, I, I pray, God, that you would help us, God, that we could be a light, God, in this community, God, to let others know, Father God, that there is a God, and Lord, that you do love them, God. And Lord, I pray that you would touch us, God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you, God, and praise your name, Lord, for all things, in Jesus' name, amen. Yes, praise amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. He is good. Amen. And I just discovered I've lost another diamond out of my ring. Oh, no. I guess i got to get me another one for our 21st anniversary, Bill. Yep. I'm just going to get something else. Lord have mercy. Well, anyway, let's get on to the lesson. Our title today is Paul Confronts Evil Spirits. We're on page 51. Uh, if you've got you cordially. Go back there on my desk, Jenna. There's an extra cordially. Will you go back and get that to change for me? Please and thank you. Page number 51 here. Paul confronts evil spirits. Up under that it says every evil spirit is subject to the power and authority of Jesus Christ. Ain't that good to know? Yes, that he's you. over the evil spirits. Amen. And um, it's good to know that he is in control. Alright, let me read a little bit of our lesson overview. Um... Well, that's in my quarterly. That's not in your quarterly. So I'm going to read this couple paragraphs here. Um, 
and then about the a little bit of the history. So <clears throat> since the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness coexist in conflict, and we know that, don't we? The, the, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness always in conflict. This spiritual warfare is invisible but real. This lesson examines three examples of the Apostle Paul's encounters with evil spirits during his three missionary journeys. First, on the uh, island of... Now, y'all just overlook these words if I don't pronounce them right. First, no. First, uh, on the island of Cyprus, then at Philippi and Macedonia, and finally at Ephesus. In each of these instances, Paul was victorious over the forces of evil because all creatures, whether physical or spiritual, were made by God and are subject to God. As this lesson shows, evil spirits are subject to Christ and to believers in Christ. Evil spirits are subject to believers in Christ because of believers' relationship with Christ. And aren't you just so thankful that when we get those evil thoughts, those mad thoughts, those um, angry thoughts, that God, we can just say, God, I need you, buddy. And he's there. He's right. there to help us. Amen. Right. Amen. All right, and then a little bit of the history it says the three parts of this lesson are three scenarios of historical events that occurred during what are commonly identified by Christians as the Apostle Paul's three missionary journeys. Paul's first missionary journey was undertaken in company with um, Barnabas. Barnabas, yeah, and took them to Cyprus and part of Asia Minor. Paul's second missionary journey, accompanied by Silas, took them into Europe, where they ministered at Philippi and Macedonia. Paul's third missionary was three years of ministry in Ephesus. Overcoming and casting out evil spirits was prominent in Jesus' ministry and also in the ministry of his apostles. All right, our golden text says, Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Do you still think that uh, we have power like that? Well, through God, God working through mm -hmm. an individual. Can that still happen today? Yep. Sure it can. Mm -hmm. All right. Our three parts of the lesson are... Encounter with the sorcerer, and then we've got confrontation with a fortune teller, and then the last section is Christ exalted through supernatural manifestations. Right. And we're in the book of Acts, yay! We're in the New Testament, yay! Um, but we're in Acts chapter 13, we've got a few verses from there, and then three verses from chapter 16, and then a few verses from chapter 19. And we're only going to look here at our uh, lesson uh, scripture here. So let's look at our first uh, section. There again, was uh, encountered with a, or encounter with a sorcerer. Does anybody know what a sorcerer is? Fortune teller. Well, they sort of go along the same lines. Well, yes, it all has to do with witchcraft. Yes, Lord, and that stuff scares me. Anyway, it's, I mean, you know, but God can um, help those people, you know, people. I mean, I've heard of testimonies of fortune tellers and sorcerers and uh, these people that's dealt with all that kind of stuff, like getting saved, you know. And um, so they can get saved because God, and, and it's never too late, amen. I mean, it'll be too late one day, but right now it's not too late. All right, let's look here at our lesson uh, verses, the first um, five verses here says, and help me now, y'all just overlook these names if I pronounce them wrong, okay? All right, chapter 13, verse 8, page 51 in our quarterly. But um, Elymas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Deputy being governor, if I remember correctly. We'll read about that here in a minute. Then Paul, who also is called, or excuse me, then Saul who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, 
thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. And we'll turn our page over, and we'll look under Encounter with the Sorcerer. But before we do that, let me read this paragraph here in my teacher book. It says, While the leaders of the church at Antioch in Syria were fasting and praying, the Holy Spirit directed them to lay hands on Barnabas and Saul to ordain them to go do the work to which the Holy Spirit had called them. <clears throat> Thus sent forth by the Spirit and by the Holy Spirit, excuse me, Thus sent forth by the church and by the Holy Spirit, Bartimaeus and Paul traveled to Cyprus, the island home of Bartimaeus, to begin their evangelistic ministry. There they ministered first in the city of Salamis, where they preached in the synagogues, proclaiming the word of God or the gospel. And here, for the first time mentioned, is made that John Mark, the cousin of Bartimaeus, was with them to assist their ministry. Now we'll get into our book on page number 52 under Encounter with the Sorcerer. It says, On this, his first missionary journey, Paul, or also called Saul, uh, experienced an encounter with an evil spirit. Having traveled across Cyprus, Bartimaeus and Paul arrived in the capital city of, how do you pronounce that? Papahus? Papas, I guess. There they visited the governor, or the deputy, of Cyprus, a man named Cyrus Paul, Paul, Paulus, because he had invited them to proclaim the gospel to him. However, there was present with the governor a Jew, a sorcerer, sorcerer and a false prophet called, um, it looks like Bar-Jesus, but I'm sure that's not the way it's pronounced, so we'll say how do you say Jesus in Spanish? Bar but well, that's what I thought it might have been pronounced like that. Bar Jesus. Jesus, and that may be the way it's pronounced. I don't know. I didn't look it up. But anyway, the, he was the son of Joshua. When Bartimaeus and Paul attempted to proclaim the gospel to the governor, the sorcerer sought to turn the governor away from the gospel. Paul addressed the sorcerer as a child of the devil, which he was full of deceit or subtility and fraud or mischief and an enemy of all righteousness. Then Paul commanded the sorcerer to cease from perverting the right ways of the Lord. And to make certain he did cease, Paul pronounced a curse upon him from the Lord. Paul's word was fulfilled when a mist and a darkness fell on the sorcerer and he asked someone to lead him by the hand. The good result of this curse was the governor, seeing this miracle, became a believer in the gospel, being astonished at the power of the gospel. I, I think that's pretty neat, don't you? Have y'all ever experienced anything like that, like somebody coming to Christ, maybe through your life or through something you say? Of course, we probably all have. But he, but the governor in this case chose the gospel over the sorcerer. Yay. Amen. 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 And then our lifeline uh, says, Whatever the Lord Jesus calls and sends us to do, he will also empower us by his Holy Spirit to do. Christian living and Christian ministry are endeavors in opposition to evil spiritual forces and without the enabling power of the Holy Spirit to make us sufficient for Christ-like living and Christian ministry. We will fall in both endeavors. So I like that first sentence. Whatever the Lord Jesus calls and sends us mm -hmm. to do, he will also empower us by his Holy Spirit to do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, um, you know, you think you can't do it, and we can't do it in ourselves as far as Christian work. You know, I've, I've heard um, 
uh, you know, people may be called to be a missionary, mm-hmm. and, and they don't want it. They don't want to go physically. They don't want to go because they don't want to leave family, or they don't want to leave this, don't want to leave that. But then they said, "But I got to go because the Spirit is leading me to do and, that." And a lot of times, people rely, try to, when it comes to fighting the enemy, spiritual warfare, and things of that, and even ministry. Too many try to do it in their own flesh instead of in the power of the Spirit. True. True. Yep. Anything else along this line? Brother Jimmy, you got anything? No? Is he still on there? Oh, he probably does. Okay. I think he is. Yeah, he's on here. Okay. All right. Anything else on that line's about the sorcerer? All right, if not, we're going to move on to confrontation with the fortune teller. No, no. I mean, it goes in the offering plate, not in the Sunday school stuff. <clears throat> All right, Jenna's going to come around and receive our Sunday school offering here. <clears throat> All right, second half here, or the, yeah, the second notice here is coming out of Acts chapter 16. Verses 16, 17, and 18, and all three of these verses, of course, are, lit, are read, are here in our quarterly for us to look at. It says, And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with the spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying, or fortune-telling. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. That's powerful. I have a question. Mm -hmm. That's Dr. Coble. Uh huh. I know it is. Go ahead. (laughs) <laughs> Why is it wrong to say I rebuke, but not wrong to say I command? Um, you're talking about when you're praying over somebody. Uh-huh. Well, well, you, okay, go ahead. What I have learned, and I know what you're talking about, because I even said it myself several times, that we need to, we need to just say the Lord rebuke thee. But isn't that what we're doing anyway? Because if Jesus has sent us to do a work, he's gave us the power to do it. And we're representatives of him. Mm -hmm. So we should have that power to rebuke or, or even command the enemy go like Smith Wigglesworth, for instance. He, he was in a hotel room one night. Or was it? Yeah, it was Smith Wigglesworth. Um, And the enemy come in, and and he jumped up, and he said, oh, it's just you, and then went back to sleep. And then he he said, wait a minute, devil, you moved my bed. Now I rebuke you and command you to move my bed back, and he moved his bed back. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, I remember that. All right, let's look here on page 52 under confrontation with the fortune teller, fortune fortune teller. It says, while Paul and his ministry colleagues, call it colleagues, not colleagues, colleagues, were going to a place of prayer near Philippi in Macedonia, a teenaged slave girl followed them who had a spirit of divination and was used by her masters or owners to profit her or to profit from her fortune telling. Sadly, this slave girl was demon-possessed, and Paul and his company knew this. When the demon-possessed slave girl began following Paul and his colleagues, loudly declaring them to be servants of the Most High God, who show unto us the way of salvation, Paul did not want anyone to think his ministry was in any way connected to the evil works of this slave girl. Eventually, Paul was so grieved or greatly annoyed by her persistent, persistent, but unwanted public publicity, he took action to stop her. Paul rebuked and cast the demon out of the slave girl, 
and immediately she was freed from its power over her. And then I've got a sentence here to read in my teacher book somewhere. Hold on. Uh, just before we read the lifeline that sort of goes with this, it says, Good things do not always immediately happen to God's people because they do good things. And I thought that was a pretty good um, sentence. And then our lifeline says, God brings good from bad things that happen to his people. For example, after Paul cast the demon out of the slave girl, her owners succeeded in having Paul and Silas beaten and jailed. But God sent an earthquake to free Paul and Silas. As a result, the jailer and his whole household heard and believed the gospel and were baptized as believers. Mm -hmm. So that is cool. <clears throat> All right. Any comments or questions? We'll ask Dr. Coble. You can ask him the questions. <laughs> uh, if you're going to cast out demons, you better have the goods. Right. You better. Right. This is very, very true. Very true. Yes. They are not anything to mess with. I mean, don't take it lightly, you know? No, but that's something that everybody would love to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, nobody, somebody has to step up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the Bible says sometimes that demons don't come out without fasting and praying. True. So, a lot of times, Paul would do it as <laughs> seemingly without praying. He'd just do something. Mm hmm. And he had the good start with, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Anybody else? All right, if not, let's look at the last portion of the lesson, which is entitled Crossed, Crossed, I'm looking at no, Christ Exalted Through Supernatural Manifestations. And that's coming out of Luke chapter 19, verses 11. Acts 19, 11. Excuse me, what did I say? Luke. Luke, golly, I got Luke on the brain. Acts 19, uh, verse 11 through 17, which are also printed here in our lesson. It says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews... Um, Anybody want to help me with that word? Exorcist, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew a, and chief of the priest, which did so. And the evil spirit answered, and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, and overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks, also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. All right, on page 53, under, of course, that title again, Christ Exalted Through Supernatural Manifestations. It says, miracles are not always, excuse me, miracles are not happenings of an ordinary nature, but supernatural works of God. Mm -hmm. However, the miracles God performed through Paul at Ephesus were exceptional. These are specifically identified as special miracles. They were miracles that occurred to people who came in contact with the handkerchiefs and aprons used by Paul in his work as a tent maker. These special miracles may have occurred at first as, as a coincidence of those who washed Paul's handkerchiefs and aprons, 
but then developed into an intentional ministry practice. However, it came about by means of contact with Paul's handkerchiefs and aprons, diseases departed from the diseased and evil spirits went out of those who were possessed by them. At Ephesus, some traveling Jews who professed to be exorcists attempted to mimic the ministry of Paul. They commanded a demon to come out of a man by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. The man, after replying, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? So violently assaulted them. They fled out of that house naked and wounded. As news of this happening spread, mightily grew the word of God, the gospel, and prevailed. And then our lifeline says, The church has something the world does not have. Jesus Christ, the gospel, the power of the Holy Spirit, the possibility of a transformed life by faith in Jesus Christ, and eternal life through Jesus Christ. These are the realities by which the church must overcome evil. Aren't you glad you know him? Amen. 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 And then I've got another little paragraph here in my teacher book. It says, To be an effective force against the evil in this world, there is no substitute for the church worshiping and serving in the power of the Holy Spirit. The church will not overcome evil by doing the same things the world is doing, only doing it in a religious context. Right. So we got to be effective in this world that we're living in. Amen? Amen. All right, any comments on this part of the lesson? How would you like to be the one that got sent out with naked and wounded? Mm -hmm. mm. That wouldn't have been too good, I would it? I thought about it. They didn't have the goods. <laughs> right, right, true. All right, well, let's read our little story. Opal's busier. I'd have her to read it. She done a good job reading it last week, but we'll, we'll read our life-related learning. It says, A Hedge of Spiritual Protection. And boy, that's been my saying for years. A hedge of protection, you know, keep us all safe uh, and keep us uh, protected. But anyway, it says on page 54 of our quarterly, a hedge in Bible times was a special barrier or fence placed around grape vineyards to keep rodents, thieves, or birds from coming in and stealing the harvest. Spiritually, a hedge is God's wall of protection for all who believe in him walk with him, and trust in his name. As Christians, it is time we declared, I've come to get back what Satan stole. I want God's protective barrier around my family and life. So many parents feel lost when their children go off to college or move away from home. Haven't experienced that yet, but it's coming. It is easy to fall. It is easy to fall into deep worry and fear about what they are doing at any time of day or night. But here is a practical way to help them. Pray a hedge around them. Years ago, as a young preacher, I was visiting in, um, what is that, Natchik, Natchik, Mississippi. A family put me up for a night, and the mama was a sweet saint of God, the dear woman had a faithful 14-year-old girl and an unfaithful 21-year-old son. About 4.30 in the morning, I was returning from getting a drink of water when I heard something that sounded like a wounded animal in an eject... Um, oh, Lord, what's that? Judith? No. Adjacent. Huh? Adjacent. 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 There you go. Room. Concerned, I stopped to listen and heard the broken voice of that saintly mother say, Oh, God, please save him. If you have to take my life, Lord, don't let him go to hell. Lord, protect him tonight. I don't know where he is tonight. Lord, but please protect him. Deeply moved, I went back to the bed, but sleep didn't come quickly as I thought of this mother's burden. 
The next morning at breakfast, sitting with her family, I gently said, I heard you praying last night. She apologized quickly. Oh, I'm sorry, Brother Ron. I hope I didn't disturb you. I said, no, ma'am, it didn't wake me, but it disturbed my compliance spirit. She said, I've been praying for seven years for my son to come out of drugs and alcohol and to come home. I shake my head to think how many times we pray five minutes about a need, and when the answer doesn't come, we give up our intercession. But this saintly mama, or yeah, mama, was like Job. She didn't give up. And her faithfulness was rewarded. The next night, her son staggered into a church and gave his heart to Jesus Christ. Just when she was probably about ready to give up, the son came to church and walked down the aisle and got saved. Amen? So we got to be persi persistent. Is that the word I want? Persistent in prayer uh, about our lost loved ones um, because they can come to know the Lord yeah. as their Savior. Amen. Amen. All right. Once again, thank you all so much for being here. Any closing comments on the lesson today? All right. If not, let's see. Brother Ralph's preaching. Brother Ralph, now, on our closing prayer, we've been anointing Brother Bill. So is it all right if I just come back there and anoint you, or you want to come up here? Huh? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> That's our. That's been our closing prayer. Bill, I'll let you lead this prayer. Yep. So if y'all will just stretch your hands forward here or this away, and Brother Ralph's going to come. So he's going to minister to us today, and we'll have Brother Coble to pray over or him. Amen. Father God, I just yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, Lord, we pray, Father God, that you would touch Brother Ralph, God, Lord, that you would speak through him, Father God, today, and Lord, we pray, God, that you would touch him, God, and Lord, just anoint him, Father God, today, God, to speak to our hearts, and God, we thank you, Lord, for that, Father God, we thank you, God, for your presence, God, for your spirit. And we pray, God, that you would just be here, God, in our midst today. And, Lord, we thank you for it, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much, Facebook, for tuning in. We'll be back on in about 15, 10, 15 minutes. All right. We'll have